Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny wily stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is episode number 72. We are covering today the top five how the hell did you get slash keep your job in sci-fi. So it's effectively people who suck so bad at their job that everyone that watches the show is like, just, just fire him, throw him out the airlock, just, just get rid of him. He sucks, he's horrible, he's bad. So. Well, so, so, not meant to really be that one, but it works. Yeah, pretty much. Um, wow, that noise is just getting louder and louder. What is that? Is that my fan? Must be Amy. Anyway, joining me this week we have Amy. Hello! We have Stuart. Good morning. Wow, Amy is ridiculous loud, Stuart is ridiculous quiet. <laughs> and we did the pre-show to sort that out. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I blame Amy. You can't blame me. You're the one yes, controlling. Yes, we can. Yes, we can, because Stuart and Eugene are both the normal level. Your one is just through the goddamn roof for some reason. And it was fine a minute ago. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Just... I'm, God, can we just have a show at some point where we just don't screw up two minutes in? Nope. Like, it I, It sort of seems like a joke, but... Uh, most professional podcast ever. Really, really is. <laughs> really, really is. Meh. Uh, anyway. And Eugene is here, if I haven't given him a chance to say hello. Hello. There he is. <laughs> so, let's kick it off with number five. I'll start first. And then I'll let Amy take over, and she gets to call who gets to go when, because this is her segment. You threw it at me, and yes. Yeah. So, my number five is Kavanaugh from Stargate Atlantis. You know him from season one when he chews out weird because he, his ego, get, ego gets a little bit bruised. You know him from um, when they think Atlantis is going to be taken over, so they put him in a room and Ronan goes in to kick the crap out of him and he faints. You know him because he, when they woke him up on the Midway Station, he blows it up. But one redeeming feature in the last episode of Stargate Atlantis, he happens to find the signal that links to Earth and they realise all the shenanigans and it's all thanks to him. Other than that, how did he keep his job? Just just, just throw him to the side. Out the airlock. Just goodbye. <laughs> go, go to the mainland, have fun surviving on your own. <laughs> He wouldn't survive very long. That's my point. <laughs> hey, listener. Yep, uh, I'm definitely loud. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll let Amy take over. She gets to call who goes next. So. EJ. EJ. There was EJ. no EJ. Uh, Eugene. Eugene. Sorry. Uh, Barker. Uh, with uh, for number five, um, any of the military, especially J- Japanese, anytime they were fighting Godzilla or any other monster, it's completely <laughs> useless. <laughs> that made me think of Gate. It's an anime that's on at the moment. Oh, hey. They reference Godzilla so many times. They're fighting a giant fire dragon, and it's like we're um, we're the Japanese, we're the special defense force or whatever the hell it's called. The, their, 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 whatever they call their military um, fighting giant monsters is what we do and I'm just like oh god just oh what ow, what <laughs> <coughs> so there yeah. mind you they eat, they they managed to wreck the, the big fire dragon and then some demigoddess things because the fire dragons are like their Godzilla equivalent in that world and so this demigoddess thing sends two baby fire dragons after them 
and they're just like, well, we're totally screwed now, and the rest are like, uh, artillery, and just in a second, the two baby fire dragons that this goddess chick thought was her trump cards just get deleted. Not a little bit of smite, it's all of the smite, and she's just like, well, but Act. just, what happened? What? Off topic. I know. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Uh, my number five is the entire castle of Red Dwarf. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> good. Yeah. I don't even need to say any more on that. No, no, no. But Cat. You can't go wrong with Cat. Cat is just hilarious. Speaking of which, new episodes of Red Dwarf coming out soon. Yes. So, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> okay. David's um, is the whole crew of... Star Trek Emperor Enterprise B. Yeah, it's Scarecrow, not me. Just so people... Yeah, he's sick again, so he's not here, so... Yeah. If Amy says David, she means Scarecrow. Most of the time. <laughs> I call you Bax. I know. So, yeah. Uh, so, moving on to number four? Yep. Yep. We're waiting to see who goes first. Um, Stuart. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think it is. Being no, it's not. I, no, I just keep forgetting um, names. Yeah. Yeah. And Seriously, can, just call if, me Jedi. It's not that hard. <laughs> no, it was me and the other one. But I forgot. Yeah, you got Jedi. Oh. You've got American guy. You've got crazy guy, and you got random token female. Stuart, just go. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine's a little dip. I mean, mine's from Star Wars, but yeah. mine's a little off center a bit. So, for Star Wars. Oh God. Mine are astromech droids. Ast I like the R two D two line. Yeah. Seriously, B because they do everything but astromech things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the only one that actually ever fixes anything is R two. Yeah. That's it. The rest of them are useless. Yeah, well, let's see. Episode 1, they lost, what, five of the damn things? Yeah, <laughs> trying to fix and, one shit. And one of them just goes, and I'll plug that into there. Problem solved. Well, you think about it, they wipe their memory so often. Yeah. Like, erase their memories, which is... Permanent lobotomy syndrome is what I you're mean, saying. I mean, I could have said 3PO, I mean. But... Yeah, they, they, they did m wipe 3PO. No, no, I mean, like, it's, why does 3PO have his job is what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is a translator. He just doesn't do a good job of it. Yeah, after all, he was made by Vader, so... Sort of understandable why he's a little bit thick. And a dick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll stay with Star Wars for Hawk. Uh, Scarecrow. Um, the... Gal Galactic Sentinel? The, the Galactic Senate. Senate. Yeah, that's sort of understandable. Um, it's yeah. effectively all of the politicians in the galaxy all decided as one to go, you know what, this whole military dictatorship thing works really, really well, and he is totally not an evil Sith Lord, so we're on your side, guy. It's like, it's like um, I, I um, guys, seriously, just... Uh, <laughs> Okay, my number four is the Miners from Armageddon. Seriously. It is easier to teach astronauts how to mine than miners to become astronauts. It takes almost a decade of training to become an astronaut. I'm pretty sure you can cover the basics of mining in about an hour. Relatively Maybe not. speaking. Relatively Got it. speaking. <laughs> They're close enough to Earth to have effectively real-time communications with miners on the ground. Uh, Houston, we are currently boring through something that doesn't work. Can you put that random miner guy on the radio, please? <laughs> yeah, this is random miner guy. Yeah, random miner guy. It's doing this. What do we do? Uh, Blow you, it up. You, you do the thing. Okay, we're doing the thing. Oh, the thing worked. Okay, we're continuing. We'll let you know when we get deep enough. It's like, really? Just, just really? Why? And on that note, why did the things have machine guns? <laughs> <laughs> Aliens? <laughs> why? This is just why. 
<laughs> aliens. <laughs> oh, just go, just, just go that with movie, aliens. That movie, <laughs> just that. That movie is definitely. It is such bad sci-fi that I don't even consider it sci-fi anymore. So, anyway, moving right along. American. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I give up with names, sorry. <laughs> she's, she's, so you guys give me shit for constantly forgetting names, and Amy's just like, American guy, go, whatever. <laughs> so, Eugene. My number, what is your... For my number... Yep. For my number four, I decided Counselor Troy, up until the episode Chain of Command, which I believe was season six. Because, uh, other than... Captain, I'm sensing a powerful mind. She didn't do much. Um, pretty much you. She did have a use. You're just not looking low enough for it. Well, that yeah, counselor. That that view, that view. She was. Anyway, that's, her t even her toys had that view. Not joking. Kind of creepy. <laughs> Kind of creepy. I mean, really, really been creepy. So, but but after that episode, you know, her character finally became useful, yeah. other than being outstanding. So, everyone done number four. Yep. Yep. Okay. My number three is the Men in Black agents. <laughs> Seriously, you work for a top secret organization. That fights aliens. The worms do a better job than you. And they love coffee. How? <laughs> just how? Do you even... It's just... Uh, at least they're not as bad as my number two, but I'll get to that when I get there. But seriously, top secret organization, guys. I think they forget that minor detail. Yeah. Anyway. Um, mo moving right along. Well, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, go. <laughs> uh, my number three is Al is the Alpha robot from um, Power Rangers. Uh, ay 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 ay. Oh, I hate that. I can't stand <laughs> that robot. Yeah. A group of kids are completely oblivious to how useless that thing is. Hey, for the record, Alpha did make the White Ranger. Where's Zordon's help? Probably 99.9999% Zordon. But Zordon <laughs> is armless and bodiless. The only one that could make the White Ranger is... That's all he is. It's meant to be arms and legs for Zordon. Yeah. The, the weird thing is, and this is something that no one's ever really considered. How did they make the White Ranger? <laughs> did, they, did they collect Tommy's body parts from random chunks of land and sort of fuse them back to create Tommy? Uh, no. I, I I believe they actually explained it in the episode, actually. They created the they created the White Ranger energy and, in, and infused it into his body. Sure, we'll go with that. Anyway, moving right along. Um, Scarecrow's number three is... Um, Senator Robert Kenzie. Uh, Senator Kinsey from Kinsey. Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> yeah, well, technically he did lose his job. But not quick enough. But not quick enough. Yeah. Did they uh, kill him exactly? Um, they uh, sort of killed him. Actually, I think they did. I think they killed him off in Season 9. Um... Season 9 or Season 8? What, the trust got to him properly? Yeah, the trust got to him... It might have been Season 8. The... Um, Goes he's too useless and killed him? No, they were trying to convince um, the Russians that America had been invaded by Gould, even though the Gould had invaded Russia. Um, and, yeah. Anyway... Moving right along. Who hasn't At done? least you and me. It wasn't done number three. As it's just me and Amy left. Uh, go for it, American. <laughs> uh, the 
the one that everybody hates, Jar Jar Binks, was my number three. Yeah. yeah. But he's a giant Sith Lord. Said no one ever. Yeah, I, I, I still <laughs> like the Robot Chicken episode where Jar Jar rocks up and meets Anakin as Darth Vader. That was pretty funny. And Vader then blasts him out the airlock and he becomes one with the Force and follows him around as a Force ghost. <laughs> I actually, I actually uh, showed uh, Jody the uh, Stormtrooper thing from um, Robot Chicken. Stormtrooper? Stormtrooper? Go, go fuck yourself! Yeah. Q. Q. Yeah. No one ever really thinks about the day to day life of the Emperor. No. <laughs> That'd be either really boring or just n- not exist, or like completely horrendously bad. Yeah. Especially have to deal with all the politicians. Well, Although, I guess you could just kill him off and just bring a new one in. Why do you think he dissolved the Senate? <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Have we all done our number threes? Yeah. Okay, my number two is S.H.I.E.L.D. And now, S.H.I.E.L.D. is worse than the Men in Black. Even though they're both secret organizations. And the reason they Shield they're worse... S.H.I.E.L.D. just blow up everything. Well, the reason S.H.I.E.L.D. is worse is because they're a top secret military organization that no one's meant to know about. Everyone knows about. That puts their fucking badges on everything. <laughs> they're like the goddamn Autobots. We have robots <laughs> in disguise, but we've got our badges all over the sides of us. So that no matter how hard we try and hide, you know it's us. It's like, uh Yeah, Decepticons are just as bad for that. I know, oh, but oh, yeah. still. And, like, when we, and when we go to your country or, or wherever, we're going to flash our badge which says, Hi, I'm... I'm with S.H.I.E.L.D. Exactly. It's just... Uh, it's just... Yeah. For, it's just as a top secret organization, they suck. Just horribly. Somebody's eating something and they just right. to be slapped. <laughs> slap yourself. There we go. I hope that was a slap. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> what, not a clap? Scarecrow. Is um, number two. Number two is Patrick Zala from Gundam Seed. Yeah, I have no idea who that is. He's in charge of the whole coordinators. So, so basically, I'll explain this one because I actually know this. Oh, good. This guy is your your definition of insane bad guy. His 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 wife was killed by by the the. The good guys, uh, both sides are like wrong on this, by the way. I, mean, it's just, uh, I wouldn't call them good other. guys, I'd call them uh, slightly naturals. less bad guys. Yeah. No, naturals. <laughs> Neutrals? Naturals. But basically, in the show, Earthlings. there's um, naturals, which is like non enhanced, and then there's the other side, which is enhanced okay. um, people. And there's a war going on between the two sides, and um, Patrick Zahl's wife was murdered, so, he decided, so then he gets elected in as the chairman of. <laughs> of the other side, and he's just a complete psychopath that just wants to destroy everything. Sucks to get on his wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. Then again, you still wonder how Kira ended up being in the strike. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, I swear. <laughs> I'll bring up my problems with that in my number one. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's gonna be an honorable mention anyway. Oh no, no, trust me, I have a whole thing for my number one. Okay. So, okay, Eugene, go for it. Um, I'm going with Seven Dark Seven. I'm sorry, seven you're, dark... you're very, very quiet, very muffled for some reason. I said, I'm going with Seven Dark Seven. Seven uh, Dark Seven. Huh? So say, um, I have no idea what that is. Okay. Um, there was a Japanese anime series called Gotcha Man. Well, when oh, it was first God, brought going where I think it's going, <laughs> when it was first brought to the U.S., they dubbed it and they added in this really horrendous robot called Seven Dark Seven, which was really lame. And it's only in the American version, and it's really bad. And it's so bad that when they re redid the the series back to its original Japanese, they took that out. That was not put back in. 
but it that one was real bad on the American people that would say, oh, let's do this. Everybody loves a robot. Look at 3PO. Everybody loves him. Wait. <laughs> um, guy, I think you got a bad... I, I don't think that'll work. Just, just, just... Come, just oh, yep, you're gone. Okay. Okay, apparently we have a robot now. <laughs> oh, speaking of robots... <laughs> My number two is the Minicrons from the Transformers TV shows. Minicrons? Mini Minicrons are these tiny little um Transformers oh, they that turn into weapons. Yeah, and then and then they power Thanks. link to they power link to large transformers. Yeah. Well, that's I hated the I and the the personalities in the the, the the dub version was just horrendous. Hey, on the plus side, at least you didn't have headmasters. Uh. Transformers headmasters. What the hell were they smoking? <laughs> no, no. You know what's worse than headmasters? Rescue bots. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking about that either. No oh, Transformers. Went from really, really corny '80s series to what the hell am I watching? To Michael Bay. It's a long, slow progression down. A couple of high points along the way, but for the most part, it's just down. <laughs> so, anyway, what's uh, have we done all the number twos yet? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Well, my number one is the Jedi Council from Star Wars. Seriously, nobody sucked at their job more than them. Their entire job was to stop the Sith. They sat there for years face to face with the Sith Lord and didn't know it. Oh, that sounds like Harry Potter. So... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Everyone knew who Voldemort was, though. No, I was talking about the Death Eaters. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, it's, so... it's, Seriously. It's like, the, the Dark Lord of the Sith, the guy you're trying to hunt down to stop the war, is sitting three foot away from you and you can't tell? You build your Jedi Temple, at least this is what I heard, Stuart can confirm this, if it's true or not, but I heard that they built their Jedi Temple on the ruins of a Sith Temple. Why? <laughs> like, that's... Because they want to corrupt their young? Just, it's like, why? It's why? What would ever be the reason for doing that? That's like building... <laughs> it's like just, building the White House on an Indian burial gr burial ground. No, I was, I, was, I was I was gonna say a slave labor camp, but same difference. But no, it's just like what the f are you thinking? It's just I, I, I'd I'd go like they kidnap children and prevent them from ever returning to their families and brainwash them into their religion. I'm sorry, but it almost. Every scenario, well, actually, every scenario, not almost every scenario where you have to kidnap children to to teach them your religion, that is bad. Even if you're doing it for the right reasons, you're doing it for the wrong reasons, I don't care. Kidnapping kids, keeping away from their parents, bad. And supposedly so, that means to be the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, Jedi Council, you have failed at your jobs, you're all fired. Please collect, please deposit lightsaber on the way out the door. The Emperor will greet you at a high platform later. And I'm sorry, we don't have any parachutes. You know, technically, you can actually use the force to soften their blow. Yeah, but not enough. He will meet you with a lightsaber at the top. Yeah, that sounds better. So, well, he's just got to force lightning them off the side of the building. Ah! Unlimited power! Unlimited power! Oh god! Thirty jellies later. Unlimited power! <laughs> Unlimited power! Oh god damn it! How many of you guys are there? Um, I'll, kill you. I'll kill you tomorrow. About, about 160, I believe, at the time. <laughs> Unlimited oh, power! Supposedly, they supposedly say 10,000, but it's about 160. Yeah. They like, okay, okay, okay. Just give me a was, second. No, I just on. gotta catch my breath. Just stand there in line. Let me refresh. It's about 160 at the temple at the time. I don't yeah. know what the others were off fighting. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, uh, just at this point you're sort of asking for it, guys. <laughs> so anyway, moving right along. Um, Scarecrow's number one. The 
president the president of the twelve colonies, Battlestar uh, Galactica. Uh, 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 Roslyn or the one when it dur during the fall. The one during the fall. But he, it's not really much he could have done. This, the, he thought he had the the greatest genius in the colonies fix upgrading his tech, and well, it was the Cylons, and they literally switched off everything. And then after their first strike, he sort of gave unconditional surrender. And they silence ignored it. There's not really much he could have done. Yeah, well. Poor, poor, poor Ada. Will always be remembered as the guy that lost the... Tw that ha had the largest genocide in the history of sci-fi on his hands. <laughs> well, oh, very closely by Star Wars. I was like, I don't know! Empire did some dark things. Yeah, yeah. The, the okay. The the largest genocide in a single, single sort of day or two. That's better. <laughs> That's better. Really? Okay. There was something like one point eight trillion co uh, people in the colonies when they were wiped out, if I remember correctly. It's a lot of people. I don't know the exact numbers. <laughs> I can't remember the exact number, but it was, it was a lot of people, and they just sort of went and smush. <laughs> and delete it. Actually, no. It's way less than that. It was 30 or 40 billion. Anyway, not the point. I'm too lazy to Google it. I'll let the news guy do that later. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, news guy, what's your number one? My number one is every single freaking stupid Gundam pilot in all the Gundam animes. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad. Oh. Uh, I'm so glad Scarecrow's not on for that one. And one. rant, play, go. Seriously, do not... Why do you give control of a, of this giant mix to kids half the time? Because adults are not flexible enough to deal with it. <laughs> this is a few. It's like you're giving, the, the, you're giving a, a, a teenager a mech that can blow up an entire planet? Uh, in Pokemon, they give 10-year-olds... Actually, that's my honourable mention. My honourable mention is Professor Oak. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, man, if I, if I could do a rant on Pokemon. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't anyway, get started. Anyway, yes. Keep keep ranting on your gun there. As, as much as I love Gundam, the, the amount of idiots in there could, could fill the entire Darwin Awards shit up for, like, 10 years. <laughs> Probably. Come on, they've got... How many of them are non-combat? Um, are actually not even part of the military when they end up in a Gundam? About three quarters of them. <laughs> wow. I mean, you got Kira, who's a complete pacifist. Pass yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is worse than a Jedi Temple. You've got a kid in there who is a complete pacifist and, and, and then decides to fight to defend his planet. No, just fights to defend his friends. Oh yeah, defend his friends. You're still fighting. You're not a pacifist anymore. Except he doesn't do it. He, the way he battles is actually... He cuts off the head of the Gundam and the limbs and that. But leaves the torso alone. Because the torso is where the pilot sits. It's still fighting. Yeah, technically no longer a pacifist. Just saying. Yeah, I know, but... As soon as you chop the first of them off, you're gone. Yeah, just saying. If <laughs> someone says to me, I'm a pacifist and I want to fly a Gundam, I'd be like... No. Do you need a dictionary? Do you want me to look up the definition? You, no, no, my first, my first question is, do you need anger management? Yeah. So well, okay. okay, you're a pacifist. You don't want to hurt anyone, correct? Yes. You want to go to war and kill people with the Gundams? Yes. Do you not see the logical inconsistency <laughs> of those previous two questions? No. He, he didn't want to go to war. Yeah. He didn't want to be anywhere near it, but yeah. he didn't have a choice. Yeah, he did. He could have gone on the other fucking side of the galaxy. Not really. We would have run out of power. Take a shuttle. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Uh, Eugene, number one. J.J. Abrams. <laughs> oh, I'm what? gonna walk Me away. Me too. Huh? I'm just gonna walk away from that one. Oh. Keep, keep going, Brent. Engage. Play. Just, I'm walking away. 
well, his wonderful uh, renditions of the last two Star Trek films have, have left us with uh, so much anticipation for, um, what are we calling the next one? <laughs> uh, shoot. Beyond Hope. The Beyond That's Saving. It. Beyond Saving. Beyond Saving, Beyond Hope. Take your pick. <laughs> yeah. And you know, from my perspective as a model builder, you know, we... Hello? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, from perspective as a model builder, we won't, won't see the model of that ship in the U.S. because as he screwed the scale up so bad and, you know, nobody's 100% sure as to exactly what size the ship should be. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit weird. Um, there's a couple of the shots where the ship should be substantially smaller than it is. And there's a couple other shots, like they show the internal engine room, and it's like, um, is this thing a fucking TARDIS? How do it's you fit brewery. all of this inside that tiny little thing? How is that? How? Just how? I would actually hate to think of what rooms are actually in the TARDIS some days. All of them. The TARDIS has all of the rooms. I mean, what type of rooms more the worry? Oh, yeah, well, when Amy and Rory were there, there was definitely a BDSM room. <laughs> of course there's one there. How do you, mean, how did you, get, how do you think he gets along with the Daleks? <laughs> harder. Harder. Oh, God. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> WD-40, please. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh. I'll, I'll joke for the Buzzcocks when David Tennant was on there. Uh, I, had, I had cribbins. I'm just going to leave that alone. So who hasn't done number one yet? I think we've, I think we've all done. Have you done yeah. Scarecrow's number one? Yeah. yeah. But honourable mentions now. Honourable mentions. mentions to the Time Lords. <laughs> no, the High that's... Council of Gallifrey. Ugh. Professor Oak. Seriously. <laughs> you're giving monsters that shoot electricity to 10-year-olds and letting them go out in the wild on their own. Especially ones who don't agree with each other. So why? And, and apparently the 10-year-olds never age. What the hell? What about Shinji? It's just... You send them out into the wild with, um, with an animal that isn't tame to fight other animals effectively to the death. Pretty much. It's just... Fuck it, at least until they're mildly concussed. It's like, what the hell, Professor Oak? What are you doing? You idiot. Just well, unfortunately, it's not just him. Irresponsible person ever. And then everyone else around the world goes, oh, look what Professor Oak's doing. That's a really good idea. No. No, no, no. It's a really bad idea. <laughs> Setting 10-year-olds into the bush on the road up against deadly monsters. Bad idea. <laughs> Isn't that just Australia? Yeah, pretty much. I lived it. I survived it. <laughs> I don't want anyone else to go through this. <laughs> um, I wonder if all the professors have like profound anger issues, and that's how they do. That's how they um. That's their um way of getting rid of it is, is by sending kids off to their death. <laughs> How about Shinji? Who? Shinji, from uh, Evangelion. I haven't seen it. Have you not seen Evangelion? Come on. Because I've. I would say I have a life, but that's definitely a lie. <laughs> um, reasons. I'm going with reasons. I'm going with I spend too much time building models. It would. It's very screwy. Let's put it this way. The oh show. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's putting it nicely. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was also my first anime I ever watched. <laughs> yeah, oh, first anime that I ever watched. Wow, that's. That would have to be Transformers, Gen 1, and Techno Man. Okay, uh, Dragon, Then Dragon Ball Z, and then Pokemon and Digimon. And okay, let's rephrase it. Uh, not including the kid-friendly ones. Oh, the first the first sort of proper anime. See, yes. mine was, gun, was, gun, was a mobile suit Gundam Wing, so I came in violently. <laughs> mine would still be Techno Man, then, even though they showed that to children, which is really horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had even Galleon out, um, out of the library. Oh, God. Cool. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, they throw a kid with no spine to be a spine of a giant robot. I see that ending about as badly as humanly possible. <laughs> yep. Like, that's that's Avery and Family Guy level bad. Not Family Guy, American Dad. Whatever. Same difference. 
Seriously, let's do it. If you eat another chip into the microphone again, I will throw you out the airlock and close it behind you. But then you have to do the news. Okay, let's do it. Do the news so I can throw you out the damn airlock. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, no. All, all seriousness, any other honourable mentions? Um, Stuart sort of killed one of mine, which was, um... Every single mobile, mobile every single Gundam pilot? <laughs> was actually Kira, but... Well, I still stand with my, with my number one. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you, but still. Stuart, do you want to do your honourable mention? You know who I mean. Oh yeah, honorable mention. Hate him fucking Christensen. Here we go. Never ever ever come back to Star Wars. That's it. That's it. You told me you were going to rant about him, and it was <laughs> two sentences. That's not a rant. That's just being bitchy. I am. I can be bitchy every now and then. <sighs> I thought that's what Jody was for. No, that's if I insult Twilight. Oh, there's my honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mention Twilight. It is so not sci-fi; it's fantasy, and we want nothing to ever do with it again. <laughs> For the love of God, stop sparkling. <laughs> Actually, I, I remember one. One of the guys from Primitive Primeval. How they're chasing dinosaurs through portals. Oh yeah. Oh. That show was horrible in itself. Yeah. For some weird reason, I'm going through a dinosaur um, phase. Phase. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> Ark. Has nothing to do with Ark survival at all. Pure coincidence. I'm watching Primeval and Terra Nova. That's oh nothing. god, Terra Nova. Terra Nova was all right. That was filmed like just down the road from me. One of the guys I know um, is actually got one of the vehicles, which is pretty cool. I don't mind telling the cool. guns. I thought the guns were cool. Yeah, the guns. Look, mind you, some, half of the guns were just spray-painted Nerf guns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the guns from Terra Nova, I can actually get one of those for like 50 bucks. Wait. So, uh, yeah. I'll stop 50 bucks for that. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to cost me about 10,000 in postage to get it to America. So, anyway. Um, let's move on and do <laughs> the model report. <laughs> move on and do the model report. Okay, um, this week I'm not going to cover any new models. Instead, I'm going to do a special thank you to Rick Sternbach from Star Trek The Next Generation. Back in uh, seasons three and four, when Captain Picard became Locutus of Borg, uh, fans of the show were treated to a view of a Federation graveyard of ships. Well, for many years, everybody wanted pictures of those ships. And the pictures were always real small and very few to find. Well, um, a few months ago, a couple pictures leaked out of a few of the ships because they were going up on auction, because they had been uncovered, and they released them, but those were pictures of the damaged versions of the ships after they had met their fate under a Dremel. Well, Rick Sternbach, within the past couple weeks, posted up on his Facebook page multiple shots of these ships in their undamaged state. Oh, nice. Where you got to... Yes. You got to see multiple angles of them. Oh, and I he definitely posted, looked that up. I've provided a link to a site that, that's post, that shared the photos. Now, most of that's these... That's on the podcast page, isn't it? Yes, it is. Excellent. So that's facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast. Now, most of these ships were created using the 12500 scale Enterprise D model kit along with some parts from the 11400 scale Enterprise D kit. Well, the Enterprise, the bigger Enterprise D kit is out of production right now. Um, I don't know if they're bringing it back or not. 
the one twenty four hundred scale uh, or twenty five hundred scale is still in production. Nice. Uh, uh, the one ship does use a conning tower from the Red October model kit, and you can see it very. <laughs> Hashtag shenanigans. Uh, the other things that they show very clearly are the the um, Swan highlighter markers that are on several of the model kits. But you get real good views of them for the first time ever. Nice. So I, I expect to start seeing some some people really come out with some nice um, conversion conversion kits and or full-fledged models of them. Nice. I, I, I hope uh, round two takes notice and actually produces them in the 12500 scale and possibly either 11000 or 11400 scale. It'd be nice to see them come out. Oh, yeah. But like I said, this is basically a thank you to him for releasing in those photos because the, the fans have been looking for those for years. Sending you the and, love from Safe Sci-Fi. Yeah. Yes. And you, you can find some of the models at your local hobby store, and this this model report is brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Yep. So let's do it. Yep. Time yep. for the n n n n news. Did you just have a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with a very angry rant about the Oscars, and this is a pure rage rant. Oh, here we go. So, the Oscars were last well, well last night for America, yesterday for us, yesterday afternoon, morning, yeah. morning afternoon. Leo finally got something. Woo! Yes, Leo. I'm very happy for that. We really need to. Someone has probably already done this. Get like New Year's Eve celebrations where there's just fireworks going off from all around the world. Oh no no have no! Have them no. read out his name and just have that just cut straight to the fireworks going off everywhere. No no what what actually there have been a few funny memes come for him. One is um from Great Gatsby. Instead he usually has the glass in the, of a tequila in his head, but I said he's holding an Oscar in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of good ones out there anyway. Um, now I, before I go to this, I have nothing against Mad Max. It was. Hands down, one of my favorite films of last year. But to give Mad Max sound editing and mixing over Star Wars is a little scary to me. Are you seriously surprised that the Oscars are bored? <laughs> really? I, that, that, that comes as a shock to you that it's, 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 it's set up? No. Um, shall, shall we keep in mind that these are the same people that um, Lord of the Rings, they only honored the third film in the series. They didn't honor the first two because, oh, they're coming out, out one next year and one the year after. Yeah. So, I'm not necessarily that surprised, but yeah. I, I definitely agree. It's like, Star Wars, Ray did a really good job. The audio mixing was spectacular. Um, and the visual effects were far and above almost anything I've seen. And Mad Max, while well, the guy on the guitar was by far my favourite part of <laughs> Mad Max. Flaming guitar is... Flaming guitar with drums. It's just like, yep, that's a fucking thing. <laughs> that, that, that gets any guy to go to a movie pretty yep, much. Pretty much. I would be tempted to sit through the long, drawled out, boring as dicks car chase. Um, again, just for guitar guy. But that's beside the point. So I, I can let that slide. What I cannot and will not let slide that you do not give original moving score, movie score to John freaking Williams for Star Wars. Instead, you give it to the guy who did the music for Hateful Eight. There is no logical explanation for that. Uh, think about what you just said. You used logical, and you're referring to the Oscars. Hello. Yeah. There is no logic in them. Yeah. The only I thing do. I know of that is less logical than the Oscars is where I work. Oh, just thought the most racist uh, cinematography group of all time would give the Oscar to the old old white man. Okay, he has a point. 
Uh, I'm, I'm leaving it there, and we're moving on to anything except for the Oscars. <laughs> uh, moving on to Star Wars. <laughs> we're keeping on Star Wars for a bit, but no more Angry Ants. Uh, so this is cool. Uh, finally, we get we get um, details of the Blu-ray. Oh, nice. The what? Blu-ray cover uh, cover art has been uh, released, and it is BB-8 who gets the, who gets the uh, honourable position on it. Nice. So when's it coming out? Uh, April, and the special features for it have been uh, released as well, so what's going to be on the discs. Nice. We have Secrets of the Force Awakens, the cinematic journey. We have The Story Awakens, the table read. So that's gonna, uh, that one I'm really looking interested in, especially like if we actually get footage of them doing a table read. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. Uh, building BB-8. So happy he gets his own little segment. BB-8. Oh. I, was, I was talking at work the other day about the Star Wars movie. They tried to do... Um, they tried to replicate Fett with Phasma. Failed catastrophically. Instead, we got um, Traitor. Yeah. <laughs> Traitor! Yeah. Um, instead, we got Traitor. They tried to do um, a new lovable robot, which they, they succeeded in. Oh, they, they succeeded? To... Oh, yeah, they succeeded and hardcore. So. Um, it's probably the only real thing they succeeded in. They tried to set up... Um, Kylo as sort of the iconic character in the movie failed abysmally Ray took that role and there's just a long list of stuff that you could see them trying to do and just failing just left right and center oh yeah with the exception of Ray and BB-8 Shadow of a Doubt uh, Daisy Ridley stole that movie oh yeah she, she definitely deserves something for that I, I'm really sad like she didn't even get a nomination really she did, no, no, she did not get nominated for a, uh, um, actress. Sad face. Sad face indeed. Uh, there's, uh, there's a cool couple of things, um, on the, uh, 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 uh this is a cool one, um, saying on the, um, uh, special features, John Williams, The Seventh Symphony. Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> I saw that, I'm like, oh, yes. And then there's the I'm going to be watching that before I watch the movie. But when it yes. comes out, we're definitely covering deleted scenes, just saying. Oh yeah, well uh, there's like, a few deleted scenes I know have been confirmed already, but I won't go into the small stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover that when we get to it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that comes out, I think it's about mid-April, I think it's about 17th is what I've been hearing, so... So, just after Supernova. Yeah. I'm great, I'll be flat broke. Mind you, I'm already am flat broke, because I that's just... That's why I'm pre order that's why you can do pre-orders, and I'm pre-ordering mine this week. Yeah, that's a fair point. No, I'm flat broke because the new Marvel Lego stuff comes out. Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah. Alright, I'm uh, moving on to Power Rangers. And uh, um, Lionsgate have released a synopsis for the uh, Power Rangers movie coming out next year. Okay. Uh, per the, uh, as I quote, per the studio, Sabin's Power Rangers follows five ordinary high school kids who must become something extraordinary when they learn that their small town of Angel Grove and the world is on the verge of being obliterated by alien threats. Wait, Angel Grove is maybe a small town? Did it not have, like, skyscrapers <laughs> and a large port that Godzilla used to... Oh, sorry, the dragons all used to appear at? And, <laughs> like, how is that a small town? It's like I, saying I, Brisbane is a small town. No, it's not. What? Yes, population-wise, it doesn't have that many people because we're Australia and we spread out like a damn cancer across the country. But I'd rather that than be stacked up like sardines. Yeah, it's it's not New York City. We don't have a population density of a million people per building. It's, but still, how is Angel Grove a small town? What would that this, this, this doesn't doesn't logic? Anyway, That's continue, cute. continue. My brain continue. is broken. Uh, just continue. So yeah, uh, moving on to Avengers. Some Avengers news. Ooh. So Infinity War. We'll have six. Uh, it was originally a rumor to have sixty-seven characters in it. it. Is now confirmed to have sixty-eight different characters in Infinity War. That is going to be an absolute goddamn clusterfuck. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. So let's let's think about what they're going to have to what is still to, to come. Yeah. Well, you've got we've got we've got the main Avengers, obviously. Yeah, Iron Man, um, War Machine. Thor, Thor's friends, Captain America, Captain America's friends, all of the... Spidey. Spidey, potential Spider-Man friends, if he has any. If he's being Spider-Man, he probably won't. 
Um, Ant Man, Ant Man's friends. Um, the Inhumans. The Inhumans. There should be uh, the Defenders. Yeah, the Shield's gonna be in there. The Defender guys are gonna be in there. Just yeah. The, the, Doctor Strange. Like there's so much oh, yeah. Marvel stuff coming in the next few years. Hulk. Oh, Daredevil. Yeah, he's part of the Defenders. Oh yeah, he is too. Um, yeah, it's just, it's if they're going one massive mashup movie where everyone's involved, that is going to be an absolute goddamn nightmare. But what I'm looking forward to is when the original Avengers meet Coulson and realize that he's alive. Yeah, it's like, huh? and they just sort of curl up at his feet and sort of grab onto his and Iron Man sort of grabs onto his leg and starts dry humping him like a like a dog, just like, oh my god, he's not alive. Why are you not? And Fury might want to hide. <laughs> no, no one cares for Fury. Mm. All right, yeah. um, keeping um keeping on um Marvel a bit, uh, X Men Apocalypse. Oh. So, uh, Olivia Munn, who's going to be playing Psylocke, uh, put on her tw- uh, <laughs> I love this, because this is just pure fan service for what she's done. Yeah. Put on her Twitter a picture of her butt in the Psylocke, in the Psylocke outfit. <laughs> and the comment, and, the, and the, uh, the description for it is, see ya in three months. And it's just a picture of her turn around and her butt. <laughs> fan service. Hmm. Fan service for days. And nights. Lots Ooh, yeah. of nights. Mm. <laughs> so, let's move on to Flash. Oh, here we go. <laughs> because there was a bomb dropped last week. Oh, yeah. For those who have not yeah. seen Flash last week... Turn uh, turn your podcast off. <laughs> Let's yeah. get to the end. Exactly. Um, if you have we seen learnt Flash, who then, Zoom yeah. is. Oh, yeah. And it definitely <laughs> answers who the, the man in the mask is at the same time. Yeah, and boy, did it ruffle some feathers. Oh, so yeah. we were all wrong? Oh, we were all wrong. Okay. Zoom is Hunter Zolomon. Yeah. A.K.A. the same actor who plays Jay Garrick. Yeah. He's, uh, supposedly Jay Garrick from this world. Earth 1. Yeah, there's not too much details, but the producers have confirmed that it's not Jay Garrick, that it is Hunter Zolomon. Yeah. So whether it is Earth One, um, Hunter Solomon, or Earth Three, Hunter Solomon. Yeah, I really, really want it to go Earth Three because I would love season two to end. Season three, we go to a cri- crisis on infinite Earths. Yeah. That would make me. Ha- if there's one other um, line of comics I love besides the Flashpoint paradox, it's Crisis on Infinite Earths. Especially at, because at the end of Crisis of Infinite Earths. Barry dies and Wally takes over the Flash mantle. So I will wonder if they will do that or if they will stray away from that. Yeah. I guess there's only one way to find out. What should not find out? Exactly. Yep. But that said, it's that, that Infinite Earth is almost the Flash's equivalent of Infinity War. After that, there's not really much they can do that sort of ramps it up again and again and again, because they like to ramp it well, up. There, there is. There, so. They could still bring in um, uh, uh, Impulse. For those who don't know, Impulse is uh, Barry Allen's grandson. But still, to be perfectly honest, I'm sick of him chasing after another speedster. <laughs> it's like, how am I going to defeat him? By going fast. Well, you're going to hate the episode when it comes back, because we're gonna, now we're going to have a female speedster. Oh, God. Let me guess. Jay Garrick from Earth 4 had a, went through a bit of a <laughs> crisis? No... It, it, the character's name is, tra- is Trajectory. So Jay Garrick and Earth 4 had a bit of a it's, crisis. <laughs> it's not Jay. But all of the speedsters are Jay. Haven't you heard that? Oh, there's the... F- yeah, the fan theories. Reddit. Oh, God. The yeah. theories on Reddit just... It's Reddit. Why do people take it seriously? Anyway, moving on. Keep going. Yep. Uh, moving uh, back to Arrow, and boy, did Arrow drop a bomb as well. Yeah. Oh, both shows just seen it. And I, I'm happy, like, Arrow is sort of getting back to sort of where it was season two and season one. So it's not I, I quite s- there yet. I suspect something that we were all totally wrong about the grave. It's, I don't think it's the child anymore, no. No, not that. I don't think the person he's got to kill is... 
Uh, oh, dark. No, it's Merlin. Paramen. It's Merlin. <laughs> Paramen. Yeah. So the question is, who Who's did Paramen that? kill? If he kill, if he kills Thea, there will be an uproar. Of oh yeah. A, of, but, a, of an epic scale. But it would explain something. Barrowman's been talking about going back to Doctor Who. He wouldn't really do that if he had another show, because he'd be too busy working on said other show. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Sad sadly, um sadly enough, um Flash and Arrow are taking a month hiatus, so they are? Yeah, we won't get another episode till March twenty second. Ah. Yeah. Why? Uh, I think it's more due to the fact of Barry, uh, they had to find time for Grant Gustin to go film the Supergirl episode, so... Ah, fair enough. And there's also, uh, there's also a rumour that Stephen Amell might go do a Supergirl crossover in Season 2. Nice. So, yeah. Then we move along to Rebels, and this is, um, really cool. So Disney re have released the, um, synopsis for the last five episodes for Rebels. Yeah. And oh my lordy lordy, it is going to pick up. Oh yeah. The preview for this week's episode looks good. Yeah. The preview for this week's episode is, um, is they go back to the temple on, the, on Lothal. So this will be really cool. Yeah. And then the, the last, like, five episodes are, like, really awesome, especially Twilight of the Apprentice, which is going to be the, uh, which is the, the um, season's finale. Yep. It's a two-parter, and um, the synopsis for that is after learning um, information about the Sith, Kanan and Ahsoka and Ezra face off against Vader with an unexpected ally. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> well, because there's two possibilities in this. One is either Agent Callus, because we know he, because at the end of that of the of last week's episode, you see him thinking of whether he should switch or not. Yeah. The other rumour is Darth Maul. Actually, you want to know who I think it is? The Grey Knights. That would be interesting. That would... would be, well, the, supposedly they're meant to come in this week's episode, so I wonder if, like, Kanan is, like... Like, in his mind, he, um... He's transported there, and, and he's, like, he's got to do some sort of test or something. Yeah. The, the, like the, well, the next like five episodes are like just gonna be really brilliant. So yeah, definitely looking forward to them. Oh yeah. Well, isn't uh, Ahsoka supposed to be a Grey Knight? Yes and no. It's not confirmed. It's not confirmed, but just because I know the knowledge and, and of her lightsaber colors, I know she is. Yeah. But it's not actually officially confirmed. So yeah. Here's another good news. 1.9 Minecraft is being dropped. Woo! Released. Yay! In other good news, the most recent patch for Ark Survival added beavers, so there has been a literal endless <laughs> supply of wet beaver jokes. <laughs> oh, God. That don't stop. They just keep going and going they're, and going. They're, port going. they're portable smithies. They are. They're spectacular. They also drop the weight of wood, thatch, berries, all sorts of stuff. And stone. Yeah. And Nintendo announced new Pokemon games. Yes, I've got I've got mine on 3DS. I win. You Pokemon don't have Red, stuff. Yellow, Blue. <laughs> not those ones. They're downloadable. Twelve bucks each. Why not? I meant the I meant Sun and Moon. Oh yeah, those. Yeah, they're <laughs> irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant because we actually know nothing. <laughs> yeah. When we actually get news beyond the name, we'll we'll talk. I about did that. I did analyze the tra the um. The um, trailer, and there were a couple of like interesting concept art. Whether it makes it into the game or not is a different story. Well, well, we'll cover that later. Yeah, it's time for us to go. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got twenty odd seconds left. Um, so as always, have fun. Check out facebookcom save sci-fi right now. We're voting on the big five sci-fi series. So if you want your favourite series to make it into the big five, then make sure you get on there and vote. Uh, other than that, check out facebook.com slash save sci fi podcast for the podcast page. So, catch you next time. Bye, all. Bye, everyone. Bye. So, yeah, thanks for all the fish.
<laughs> oh, that song. I think we had a bit too much time left. Oh, just a little bit of time. A couple of seconds. 